today I uh I wanted to talk about something that uh I did recently. I rewatched a a series of movies, a cinematic universe if you will. Um there's 23 movies, so I think we all know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, it's National Geographic's Drain the Seas. No, I'm just kidding. Uh <laughs> I watched the MCU mostly. There was one movie, the little heads up, there's one movie I did not get to go back and watch, and that was mostly because I didn't want to pirate it and I don't ha- I I couldn't find it on the the two or three streaming services that I have uh for myself. And that was the Hulk. Uh I'm talking about the MCU. I I rewatched the entire MCU minus the Hulk movie, The Incredible Hulk, with Edward Norton, because that is that is MCU canon. Edward Norton um was our first Incredible Hulk and then passed over to Mark Ruffalo for the uh uh in the Avengers. Um so I watched I watched this whole thing, but I watched it in chronological order, which is just a dumb thing. <laughs> No, uh, nobody really needs to do it, but it it is it is kind of cool. There was a couple of small differences. Um, uh, so when you watch in chron- chronological wow chronological order, you uh start with Captain America the first first Avenger. Um, in, in movie release, it's Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man two, Thor, Captain America, then the first Avengers, and uh in chronological order, you end up watching. Captain America, the first Avenger, and then Captain Marvel, and then Iron Man, Iron Man, uh, Incredible Hulk, and Iron Man 2, and so so on and so forth. Um, there isn't a whole lot that changes. The only other thing that, that really changes in your movie, movie experience is Guardians of the Galaxy 2 comes right after Guardians of the Galaxy 1, because it... Only it's supposed to take place only a couple of months after the first movie, so that, that falls in into the... Um, uh, the the next movie after the first Guardians, um, there wasn't a whole lot of of uh key differences that I took away from it, other than just you know, movie orders kind of fun. The biggest thing that I noticed that I really liked though was watching Captain Marvel in in the number two position because Captain Marvel was released right before Avengers Endgame, so it's not that old. Came out in twenty nineteen. Um, it's not that old at all. But when you watch it in that order, because it takes place in the 90s, um, when you watch it in that order, it <laughs> directly sets up there are post credit scenes that directly lead you into Endgame, which is really cool because <laughs> if, you, if you pretend to, to not know what's going on and you watch these in chronological order, you're like, what is, what is all this? What is this weird looking pager thing? Who are these people? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then, and then as the movies go, you are introduced to the people in the post credit scenes and and whatnot. So it's it's really cool. Uh, you get you get um a lead up to the final, basically the the final movie in the story arc, um in the second movie. So it it, it is kind of cool. It's a, it's it's when you watch it that way, it is totally a comic book in the fact that it's you know, teasing you for this over this bigger story that they, they want to tell that you're not quite ready to hear yet. And I also like it because they do introduce, um, uh, some of the, the space stuff into the universe a little bit earlier. Um, I do appreciate how they did it in the, in the regular release, how, how the movies came out, how guardians of the galaxy was really the first movie to, uh, take us to space in regards to the Marvel universe, but having uh, Captain Marvel do it was really interesting, and it it actually makes me like the movie a little better. I'll I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Captain Marvel movie fan. I it just there was something about it. it n- nothing on Brie Larson, she's great. There's I think the character seems just a little overpowered. I don't know what they're gonna do with her going forward. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff they could do. I just, she just seems a little overpowered. I mean, they used her very appropriately in Endgame. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as you go through this whole thing, it just tells you a little bit of a different story. They, they, they kind of sprinkle things in, um, more and more. Uh, 
uh as as the whole thing goes but it was really fun and it made me think too because we just got past award seed award season um it made me think about the impact that the mcu has um in general and i'm not sitting here saying that avengers endgame deserved to be the best picture of the year but the Academy Awards, and then the Academy Awards has a lot of issues um, in regards to how how things work. Um, the whole voting system's kind of weird. Some people, there, there's somewhere around 7,000 voting members in the Academy, and some people don't watch, I mean, I, I would imagine a lot of them don't have time in the day to watch every movie that's um, uh, nominated for an award. But at the same time, the Academy allows 10 movies to get nominated for Best Picture. And they only nominated nine. Um, it's, it's, a little, it's a little weird to me that when you, when you see the, the awards uh, circuits, you know, all of the, uh, the PGA, DGA, um, Critics' Choice, stuff like that, <laughs> most of these award ceremonies are precursors to what the Academy is going to end up doing. Now, it's not always um, the Critics' Choice movie that wins Best Picture. It's 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 not usually that. But, but the conversation with the Academy is... This is recognizing Hollywood. And the Academy tends to stick with... Mm, not always our tour types of films parasite won this year um i didn't see parasite it looks great i have nothing against it at all um not i i honestly just need to see it um <clears throat> but uh but the same basically the same f five or six movies were were talked about for most of the categories and in most of the other awards shows too it was pretty much the same handful of movies um but there's so many movies that come out in a year now. I mean, it's easier to make movies, and there's a lot of releases. Um, but I think the Academy needs to kind of move with 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 the times. And look, I I I get if if La La Land's gonna win win Best Picture. It's about Hollywood. It's about it's about the magic of you know. It, it, it does. It does the thing that kind of old classic Hollywood does, you know, Sing, singing, uh, singing dialogue, and uh, I'm nothing against mu musicals or anything, but it it does invoke um, a more classic time in Hollywood, and I th I feel like the Academy really loves these movies about Hollywood. Once a time in <laughs> Once upon a time in Hollywood, won a bunch of awards. Um, I don't know. Uh, I just I feel like this is a thing where they like to pat themselves on the back, which obviously this is what this is for, because this is the movie industry. But I I feel like when you leave out something like Avengers Endgame off of the best picture, it does a disservice to Hollywood because they're turning their backs on the other half of Hollywood. There's there's people in Hollywood that want to make great great artistic films, and there's also people who just want to make great huge entertaining films and disney does that a lot that's basically their bread and butter um is is uh is a lot of high entertaining stories uh, that the, you know they'll put magic in their movies but pixar movies all have magic you know the animations the, they have their they have their magic but for the most part these aren't disney doesn't typically release the Shape of Water, or or films like this. They they do Star Wars, they do Pixar, they do Marvel, they do all of these things. This is this is what Disney is, and 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 they bring they generate millions of dollars of revenue for uh for for Hollywood, uh, and I think. I think it does a big disservice when you have nine movies, uh, when you have 10, you allow 10 movies to get nominated, but you only do nine. And for whatever reason, Endgame didn't end up on that list. And I'm, I'm only getting here a little biased here because of my appreciation for the Marvel universe. 
but also what they've done. They took Iron Man, um, a B, a B character at best in the Marvel Comics world, and they turned him into the main character. Not only did they turn him into the main character, then they created a trilogy around this character. And this character stemmed off other characters, you know, uh, uh, Black Widow. We're getting a Black Widow movie here in May. <laughs> Black Widow first premiered in um, Iron Man 2. We have Thor and Captain America that they were trying those things that led up to the Avengers. They were trying to get this team up together. And where we're at now is not only did we get, not only did Iron Man work, but he worked enough to make Thor and Captain America work. And for those characters to get their own team up movie. And that's cool. That's something that a lot of, a lot of studios kind of try to try to go for is, you know, uh, multi, multi franchises teaming up into one thing. That's, that's this new thing that a lot of people are doing. Well, it's not a new thing, but it's something that people are trying to pull off now because Marvel has done such a great job, um, at doing this. Not only, not only do we get the team up movie, but we get sequel trilogies, uh, not trilogies. So far. Thor so far is going to be the first to get a fourth movie, but we have all of these trilogies from all these other characters. And we've got new characters, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, uh, Spider-Man's come into the fold, which a lot of people have been really happy about. But you also get not just all of these trilogies, you get the team-up movie becomes its own thing, too. There are four Avengers movies. You know, that's become its own franchise. The Avengers itself is its own franchise. You have multi-billion dollar franchises all leading up to this one culminating story. And in my opinion, we, in this last, the last year we had season eight of game of Thrones. We had episode nine of star Wars and we had Avengers Endgame. All three of those are huge, huge, uh, shows and movies, uh, IP that people like that they are invested in. And one out of those three, Stuck the landing, in my opinion. Um, Game of Thrones season eight. Uh, I don't completely dislike it, but I know there's a larger conversation, uh, and people are very unhappy with it. Uh, they did not. They did not stick their landing. Uh, Star Wars episode nine. We have a uh, a review of that. I think that's our episode two. I think I can't remember which one it was. I think it was episode two. You can go back and listen to that episode if you want to hear our thoughts on the rise of Skywalker. But long story short, doesn't stick the landing either. I have no idea what the fuck they did in that movie. Avengers Endgame, it's got some iffy science, but that's a movie. You know, you, you make up you make up weird shit for your movies so your characters um, go through the journey that they need to go through. Avengers Endgame stuck the landing they paid off 10 years of storytelling character arcs um there was so many moments that we got that were paid off from other storylines there's um you know captain captain america picking up the hammer um there's the whole the whole tony Ar- tony stark storyline he's he's the 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 iron heart of that movie of of the of the whole franchise i mean obviously it starts with iron man cuz iron man worked but you also get um you also get s- some um some closure to, to captain america's story you know t- everybody keeps saying he's dead but technically he's not dead he's just an old dude <laughs> and imagine imagine an old dude with captain america's powers it's probably just as you know uh, just as a uh, uh, energetic as a thirty-year-old, I bet you know, he's he's still uh <clears throat> got some muscle. He's still he's still got some uh, agility, I bet. Uh, anyways, Avengers Endgame brings closure to story arcs, trilogies, other movie trilogies. It it gives you it gives you so much closure in the story in the in the characters that we've all cared about. 
But if you're a comic fan too, it also gives you stuff that you've always wanted to see on screen. Um, there's one particular scene in Endgame. I I I want to get this framed. I think at some point in my life, but it's the it's that in the climactic battle when Thanos seems to be winning, and you know he's he's standing there and he's talking to to Captain America about you know I'm I'm gonna enjoy destroying this world because you fuckers just won't die, and you know he's got his army right behind him. And Captain America is standing on this little, like, ridge by himself, staring down the entire army, Thanos' army, by himself. You know, that that scene alone, I mean, the next couple of seconds after that becomes one of one of my favorite scenes in the movies. Uh, you know, the on your left, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's such a... Oh man, I still will go back and watch clips from Avengers Endgame, and <laughs> it came out uh, on DVD when I was working at my previous job, and I would watch clips of it sometimes in the morning before work, just watch like the fight scenes or um, you know it, and battle scenes, and <laughs> they always put me in a in an emotional devastated. <laughs> place of my day like i love the movie so much i do have to be careful with how i how i watch it because i mean there's there's scenes that will make me tear up (laughs) completely out of context too just because i know the context so um yeah i i'm i'm not i'm not arguing that avengers endgame should have one best picture at the academy awards but if hollywood is going to pat themselves on the back for Hollywood, Avengers Endgame should have been on that list. That should have been the number ten movie on their on their nomination list when they allow ten movies and they don't nominate ten movies. I think that's kind of a cop out. And it says something. It says something about the kinds of movies they want and they don't want to to nominate. I think we're getting past this point where uh, some of these blockbuster movies are just you know exciting uh, uh just whatever the stories are good the stories are really good um they're thought out the acting's fantastic the cinematography's great the the uh, uh technical aspects the cg some of the best in the industry and it's it does it does a huge disservice i think to hollywood themselves when you don't when you don't nominate something on this caliber for uh, a best picture or really what I'm saying here isn't it should be best picture. It's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that this movie deserved more than just best special effects. The special effects are great, but this does so much more. This brought move this, this, the MCU brings people to the theaters. There's good. There's an MCU movie. People are going to go at this point. They haven't, they haven't made a flop. Their their worst movies are just stuff that are like, oh yeah, this feels like a Marvel movie and it's really fun, but like yeah, it kind of felt maybe like Iron Man, or it felt like this other one, or you know, they they do have they do have a template that they like to use for particularly origin stories. It seems like, but their storytelling is there's nobody else that's done it. I think, I think Lucasfilm has one of the most impressive story groups I've seen and they don't use them for the movies at all. (laughs) It seems like they just, uh, some of the best star Wars stuff in my opinion, in the last handful of years has been the clone wars or the, uh, rebels, the animated series run by Dave Filoni. If you listen to our Mandalorian episode, You'll hear me talk about Dave Filoni and how I I feel like he should be one of the two people in charge of Lucasfilm. Their story group is incredible. They are impressive. Um, Pablo Hidalgo probably is the most knowledgeable Star Wars person on the planet. I think he might know more than George at this point. Um, But their story group's not used in their movies. The the last three movies that came out, well... um, at least saga wise 
they were just kind of thrown together. The directors were picked and writers were just kind of given free reign. That's fine. But when you have something as interconnected as Star Wars, you have to use your story groups. You just have to. Um, You don't want to step on your own toes. And Disney found out the hard way. They stepped on their own toes millions of times at this point since Force Awakens. Um, Marvel has an impressive team. Kevin Feige is one of the best leaders in Hollywood when it comes to um, when it comes to this. He's a solid producer. I, I don't know if a lot of people know this. He's been producing comic book movies for a lot longer than just the MCU. He was a producer on uh, the first X-Men movie. Um, a couple of the X-Men movies. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones, but he's been doing this for a long time. I, th- I believe he was also a producer on the um, first couple of Spider-Man movies. Um, maybe the Andrew Garfield ones. Um, I think the Tobey Maguire ones as well. But he's been doing it for a long time. And he's a comic fan. He he knows the stories. And he he surrounds himself with people who know the stories as well. Or he surrounds himself with people that know how to tell good stories as well. And this Kevin Feige is should be the president of Hollywood. <laughs> um that guy, I know he's he's gotten um awards. I th- I think the um producers guild uh has awarded him some 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 high high honors. But man, you you nobody's done what Marvel did. There's there's so many factors in here. Like again, you start with one character and you build up into a trilogy and you have all these other characters, you build up other trilogies, and then you get this team up. Like they they've done something that no one else in Hollywood has been able to achieve. I think the longest running other franchise might be the James Bond franchise, and hardly any of those are connected. I mean, yeah, they are, and there's theories out there that James Bond is a title and that um you know, every actor that has played him is is really a different person, but they all take on the same name, whatever. Uh, really, the only sequels you get are if the same actor plays James Bond again. So Pierce Brosnan, uh, Sean Connery, that, that's one James Bond. Pierce Brosnan's another. Pick one that have done multiple James Bonds. Most of them have. Um, I think George Lazenby only did one. Uh... But none of those are connected storylines. There are stories in there, like uh, Blofeld is an, a reoccurring character, but constantly recast, constantly co- constant different takes on him. And um, oh, I forget the organization. Is it Spectre? Is it Spectre that the organization that he has? I think that's it. Um, yeah, they, there's just not any interconnectivity, even in the James Bond. It's it's just. A spy movie remade multiple times, which I'm not. I like. I I, I grew up loving the James Bond movies. I, I like. I like some of the newer ones too. I like Daniel Craig. I think he's a good James Bond. I'm excited to see. Um, uh, what's it called? No Time to Die. Whenever that comes out, the I think it's going to be the final Daniel Craig James Bond movie. Looking forward to that. But you don't have the same kind of depth in the story going from the fir- from um was it Doctor No was the first one from that first. Sean Connery, James Bond, till now, there's not a cohesive story in there. It's just retellings of the same story. Marvel, Marvel's not retelling the same stories. Maybe they're, like I said before, maybe they have templates for how they tell an origin story or how they do certain certain story points, but they're not retelling the same story. Captain America 2 was vastly different than Captain America 1. And I, I that, at, that is actually an interesting thing for me. Just real quick aside, I feel like Captain America 1, or the Avengers, is the sequel to Captain America 1. And Captain America 3, Civil War, is a sequel to Captain America 2. But it's almost like the there's not like a, a meeting ground. I don't know. Uh, just babbling here. Uh, but... Marvel, man, there's so much cool stuff that Marvel has done. And 
aside from figuring out uh, pay discrepancies, I know that was a big thing um, uh, a while ago. Robert Downey Jr. was having some pay discrepancies. I think I think that ended up helping out his co his coworkers, the other the other actors. Uh, I think they all ended up getting pay raises because of him because I think he fought for them. I don't I don't know all of the the uh, the, the details in in this financial scenario but they robert downey jr was almost out as iron man um a while ago and then they renegotiated contracts um and paid him paid him a lot more i think he ended up with uh, 50 million after that um so not not only not only are they you know working out pay discrepancies in hollywood i mean those things happen um all the time in hollywood but they uh they listen to the fans too. So Marvel didn't own the rights to Spider Man because Marvel at some point in the nineties had gone bankrupt and they sold the movie rights to a lot of their characters off, which is why um Fox was putting out Fantastic Four and the X Men and Sony had Spider Man and um, you know, things like that. So I never thought there would be any kind of sharing in in Hollywood when it comes to these kinds of characters but that that hack the Sony hack happened the um when email a bunch of emails were, were leaked and all this stuff happened with Sony and they were they were in a, a bad way and uh Marvel stepped in to make a deal with them to share the Spider-Man character and not only did that deal work out we now have the best live action Spider Man, in my opinion. He is he is a sixteen year old. <laughs> he's not in real life. Tom Holland is not sixteen years old, but he he's close. He, he, I think he's in his early twenties now, but he still looks he still looks like he's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, more so than the last two Spider Man. Andrew Garfield always looked like he was tw- twenty five, and Tobey Maguire seemed like he had children uh, <laughs> while filming filming um the first spider-man um but we we now have the best spider-man in my opinion best live action spider-man we've ever had um and he's become an integral part of the story now their contract ended recently um their their sharing contract and it seemed like uh, Spider-Man was just done in the in the MCU, which kind of sucked because after Endgame, they gave us one more in this phase of movies, which is the uh, second Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. And that left us in a... There's a pretty big... There's pretty big imp- implications to the MCU at the end of that movie um, with the outing of Spider-Man. Uh, it's... that ch- That changes things because when you have someone so connected to the Iron Man character, like, like they've made him, I I will say one thing I haven't liked about the new Spider-Man is they made him Iron Man Jr. Let Spider-Man be Spider-Man, but I'll take it because this is still fantastic Spider-Man and I love it. But now, now post end game, he's, they're giving them opportunity to kind of step into his own. And, um, I hope, I hope that the deal that Sony and Marvel worked out because I want to see, I want to see a leadership role from Tom Holland as an Avenger going forward. I don't need to see nine Spider-Man movies in the MCU. Maybe Sony can put out some, maybe Sony can start doing their own, like, well, Sony has been doing the standalone ones, but maybe Sony can just do the Spider-Man movies. And then maybe he comes in, uh, in Avengers movies or a couple other team up movies, something, which is what I think is happening more and more. Um, I think the next phase phases of movies is going to be not the full Avengers team up, but I think more like civil war or, um, winter soldier where there's a couple of, or, uh, Thor Ragnarok where there's, you know, Thor and then Hulk, you know, maybe a team up, not like the full team pairings, I guess. I feel like they're going to be doing more of that. And so I hope, I hope, um, Spider-Man is still able... I hope this Tom Holland Spider-Man is still able to um, uh, work with the Avengers going forward in the future. And this is all based on 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 contracts and everything. But I've talked about a lot of stuff. I've talked about technical 
aspects. I've talked about storytelling, actors, and 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 pay grades and stuff like that. I I I'm just disappointed that <clears throat> Hollywood doesn't want to recognize what it has. Um, sure, it's a big blockbuster and it makes a lot of movie, but it has a lot of rewatchability. Um, it has a lot of great story, has great acting. Um, I think I think the things you can. F- I would I, I would like to maybe talk to somebody who doesn't like the MCU as much about some of this stuff, but I feel like the flaws in it are not are are outweighed by the positives of it. Um, this is this is uh, the new this is the new Star Wars. You know, when we were growing up, we were constantly. Well, when I was growing up, I was a big Star Wars fan, and I know um, I know the the OG movies came out right before I was born. Um, Return of the Jedi came out eighty three, and I was born in eighty four. Um, so I had those movies. I could I could soak them all up. Um, and I was constantly theorizing, and then I remember hearing that George was going to do more movies, which were the prequels, and I remember being in junior high thinking, like, whoa, what are they going to do? What kind of stories could they tell? And, you know, th- just theorizing about all that stuff. And Star Wars is still that, but it's become... Um, it's become... It's story di- it's storytelling has become a lot different, I think. I think... um there's just there's just um something that hasn't connected in the in the storytelling lately with Star Wars but Marvel Marvel is that Marvel everybody i know everybody i know that has seen Marvel movies has some sort of thought about them um they love Thor Ragnarok or they hated uh Age of Ultron or they hated um Ant-Man or Everybody can have an opinion <clears throat> about them, but they also everybody that still has those opinions still loves them to a degree. And I feel like the the as a moviegoer, they're <coughs> as a moviegoer, there's a lot of payoff, and um, there's there's more positives than negatives ab- about these franchise movies, the the specific Marvel franchise movies. Um, there's, there's a lot I would like to get in depth on with uh, some of the movies. I want to point out moments from specific movies that I love. You know, I, I'll tell you this quick story. Uh, Avengers came out when I was living in, in Berkeley. I might've mentioned this before and uh, it, it kind of uh, reignited my passion for some of these, for movies, really. Particularly superhero movies, because I watched them when I was younger. I liked them, grew out of them. And then I I went and saw the Avengers um, one night at one of the movie theaters on Shattuck in, in Berkeley. And I remember just sitting there and... I was entertained the whole movie, but that that scene in the New York battle, that 360 shot of all of them standing around, it got me. They did it. They had me. They 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 succeeded in taking all of these characters and turning them into a, a, a team, and they made me believe it. They made me believe that Hawkeye <laughs> could take out uh, alien spaceships with a bow and arrow. It's crazy because I don't know, that, <laughs> I don't know that that would work in, let's say, Independence Day. But, but um, Haw- Hawkeye is a badass in in Avengers. I, he gets downplayed because he's like, uh, he's got his uh, mind control for like most of the movie or whatever. But they still made me believe it. They still made me believe that these characters were out there and they were trying to save New York and. And and it just it changed my viewing experience. And I don't think I'm doing the things that I'm doing today. I'm podcasting, making videos. I don't know that I'm doing that without me watching that first Avengers movie. I don't know that 
I get to the point where I'm at in my life making things without that. I'm sure I would be still playing guitar um, and doing some of the stuff that I do, but at a certain point, the passion came back and the ideas of, I've always been a musician, the ideas of visual elements with the, the audio elements became more and more of a thing. And that led me to, <clears throat> when I moved back to Sacramento, or when I moved to Sacramento, I had decided I hadn't worked in TV in a long time. I did work in TV in college and that that was my opportunity to work in the industry where I kind of wanted to work. Um, so I ended up working in TV for a long time and, and taught myself how to do stuff. I worked nights at a TV station, so I taught myself how to edit better, um, use green screen, lighting, figure out cameras, producing stuff. Um, my first show, Dino News, stemmed from, from that experience. So I don't know where I'm at without seeing that movie. Um, it's not my favorite in the, in the list now that I've seen all of the movies they have out so far. Um, but it's still in my top five. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of people that could sit and point out their favorite movie moments, their favorite movie in the series, their, their favorite moments from, I don't know, man, the, there's so many things that are pleasing to not just comic fans, but movie fans. If you want to be entertained, Go watch some of these movies. I, I don't know where to tell you where to start. If you want to do the whole thing, more power to you. Go start with Iron Man. If you want to do the chronological order, that's kind of cool too. Um, there's I, I don't think there's really a wrong way to, to watch it. But if you haven't watched the MCU, I highly recommend checking some of it out. I You might not like one character, but... I do think there is huge payoffs once when you get down the line. Um, I think Avengers Endgame is one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. It 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 stuck the landing. It completely stuck the landing for me. I was completely completely entertained, and I felt f- fulfilled when I left the theater. I felt sad. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of emotions that that it, um I walked out of the theater with, but that was that movie uh, that movie experience was also one of my favorites. Um, I like to go to opening nights by myself. Um, it's easier for me <laughs> to just kind of navigate, and um, I also little I'll I'll admit this I'll admit this to everybody here. I sometimes get emotional in movies. It could be a terrible movie and it just, maybe it's the, the, the mood, the music, the whatever it is, I'll get emotional in movies and I'll, I'll tear up. And I, I, I sometimes like to go to the movies by myself for that reason. (laughs) But when I was watching Endgame, I was sitting by myself and there was this, there was this girl with, I think her dad, and they were sitting a couple, couple of seats down for me. And this was, it was just one of my favorite experiences at the theater because this girl was as, as invested as I was to these characters and the reactions I I heard from her were really funny to begin with, but I also am responsible for making some of the same noises. Like I squealed at certain points. I did let out a loud Yes, like I just exclaimed yes when um when uh Captain America picks up the hammer. Um oh, there's so many there's so many scenes that are just like oh my gosh. And um it was great. It was great to kind of exp- I don't think the girl was paying attention to me at all, but I I like to watch audience reactions to movies like this cuz this is what I'm here for. You know, I I want to enjoy it and I also want to see how other people are experiencing it too. And it was really, really cool to just hear hear this girl be as excited as I was. And like again, you know, um, uh, let's say uh, Red Skull pops up on screen, and she goes, <laughs> "Yeah, I, I was doing the same thing. I was doing the same thing." And so I related, and I was just like, at at the end of the movie, I wanted to be like, "I know, right?" But I didn't. I just let them leave and 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 do their thing. 
But um, look, I'm getting into my emotional reaction to it, which is obviously how we should cr- critique and and analyze these movies is from our emotional reaction to 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 what we saw. But I I do think that there is a huge discredit given to the MCU by Hollywood. Um, and it's because of these older mindsets of, well, that's not true film or I, maybe there's a pretentiousness. I don't know. Maybe a lot of people in, in the voting Academy didn't, didn't even see Endgame. I highly doubt that, but I think that, uh, the MCU deserves a lot more credit than it gets. Um, they're they're well made movies. They're well acted movies. They have some of the the best talent in the industry, behind the scenes and in front of it. And so I think um, I think this is this is this is my Academy Award speech for the Avengers right now. You guys deserve it. You guys deserve all of the credit. Um, you guys have entertained us for ten years now. Um, some of you guys are gone. Some of you guys are going to continue on and the stories are going to continue. I hope, I hope going forward, uh, we get just as good quality, um, storytelling and, um, just as much, uh, enjoyment out of, out of what Marvel has coming in the future. Cause they have a, a, a lineup of great stuff. Again, there are sequels to other movies, Black Panther, Dr. Strange. There's going to be a third Spider-Man movie. Um, eventually we'll get another Avengers movie and so on and so forth. I just, for what we got, I, I, I just, I want to see, I want to see something as good, if not better. They've set a standard for themselves and I hope, I hope they can live up, live up to their own hype. But, um, what do you guys think? Did you guys, have you guys watched the entire MCU? Have you rewatched it in chronological order? Uh, tell me what you guys think. Am I an an idiot for just loving these movies blindly? I mean, let's, let's talk about it. Tell me, tell me what you guys think. Um, are you guys excited for, for, uh, future Marvel stuff? I, I know now that the, the Disney Fox merger is done, we're going to get Fantastic Four and X-Men. Um, I have... I have some thoughts on on that. I I do personally think that uh, uh, maybe X Men and and Fantastic Four should remain their own cinematic universes instead of fully bringing them into the MCU. I'm I'm feeling a little overcrowded already, and there's a lot of X Men. It's all I'm saying. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, you guys looking forward to any of this stuff? Uh, let me know in any of the comments below, and if you guys uh, wouldn't mind. Uh, liking, sharing any of this content, rating it, um, all that stuff is really helpful, and um, it helps us. It helps us make more of these uh, and have more discussions on um, on the media that we we enjoy. So um, 